What, what's your name? Don't you play this game? You from another land, got you like this country band. Yo, what up guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all having a good day, or good night, or good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. Um, yeah, I thought I'd switch up the style for this video, so I'm gonna tell you a story about my skateboard getting pinched when I was in grade seven. If you like this kind of content, let me know in the comment section below, and I'll do more kind of stories that have, have to do with skateboarding, but anyway. So this is going back to when I was in grade seven, so 2004. Yeah, that's how long ago I was in grade seven. Anyway, so I would have been 13, I think. And um, if you are old enough to remember the brand World Industries, they used to be massive. Um, what happened with that brand was, I'm pretty sure they ended up selling out the licensing or something. Anyway, Target was selling um, World Industry complete skateboards and they were like something ridiculously cheap for a whole complete setup at that time. I think they were about 100 bucks and you could get like a two pack which was like 150 and you had got two boards and like trucks and wheels and everything. I only got the one board but anyway. Um, for some reason these two kids that I knew that skated in my neighborhood, they lived like around the corner. We all went to the same high school. They wanted to skate to school. So we would skate up the road. I don't know why we bothered skating the school. Like the road was like this. Once you got to the school, you had to go into the office and then you had to leave your skateboard in the vice principal's office. And like, we weren't the only few people that were skating to school. There was a few other boards there too. I think there was like a scooter or two maybe. This is before scooters become such a big thing in Australia. But anyway, so you pretty much go in in the morning, go into the vice principal's office and you leave your board there. So there's like a stack of probably like half a dozen boards in the vice principal's office. First period, second period, third period, fourth period, whatever. At the end of the day, so the last bell rang, um, you go back to the office, go back to the vice principal's office and you grab your board. Anyway, this particular morning, um, I, had, I had some weird gut feeling like, I went in and I put my board right on the outside of where there was like five decks maybe. I put my board, so my board was the last board on the end. And I had a feeling and I was like, I should like shuffle the boards and like put my board in the middle so it's not so obvious that it's a brand new World Industries setup. But I didn't. So I just kind of left it, went to class. So I went through school that day, everything was normal. Normal school day. Um, can't remember too much about that day except for my board being stolen. The last period bell rang. So three o'clock the bell rang. Um, I started walking to the office. I went to the vice principal's office and there was a few skateboards that were left there, none of them were mine, and yeah, mine was gone. Someone had stolen my brand new World Industries complete setup. <laughs> this was pretty devastating for me at the time, like I was only 13. I think I cried actually, yeah, I was a bit of a soft kid back then, so yeah, I cried that someone stole my board. Anyway, I told the vice principal, and she kind of was like, oh, okay, like kind of put a message out that my board had been stolen, but um, I never got that board back. And there was one other friend actually, one other kid I used to go to school with and he skated to school as well and he told me that as he was walking back to the office that day, our high school, there was kind of like a weird kind of tunnel alleyway that kind of led from one side of the school to the other. It's kind of dark in there anyway. He was coming from the field up to the office and there was another guy walking past and he was holding a skateboard but he was holding it like really tight to his body with the graphic facing on the inside. So the grip tape was on the outside so no one could see. And he had a funny feeling that would have been my board, but he didn't say anything. And then, yeah, he met me up at the office and it was my skateboard. Some, um, some dude had stolen my, my brand new World Industries complete skateboard. To this day, I believe it was like a, a senior, like a kid that was in a few grades above that stole my board. But yeah, damn, I was so devastated about that, hey. Like at that time, um, yeah, my skateboard was everything. I didn't really... I dabbled a bit in like BMX and like rollerblades and scooters, so I kind of did everything, but I kind of stuck to skateboarding. So someone stealing my board back then, yeah, it really sucked. <clears throat> the only um, exposure I had, or we anyone had to skateboarding back then in Australia was Slam Magazine. It was a magazine that came out every month, 
I think it was like 795 but yeah this was like the Instagram back then like I was always like keen for the next issue to come out because I'd open it up um, there'd be a bunch of skaters in there a bunch of like um, reviews on boards and clothes and shoes and all that stuff so that was kind of my only exposure I mean we had the internet but this is kind of before YouTube and Instagram and social media and skateboarding on the internet existed so that was my only um, exposure to skateboarding I think one time I hired Tony Hawk's trick tips from like a blockbuster video on VHS when I was probably like 10 maybe. Um, I kind of learned how to like kick turn and stuff from that video but that was about it. So this dude stole my, my board. My board got pinched from my high school which sucked. And I was Devo and um, there was this one kid that I was friends with for a while in high school. He had older brothers and they had a bunch of boards they used to skate and they were pretty decent setups. Like I think it was a blind maybe. But it had like, what's that old brand of truck? It's not Thunder, it's like Grind King. Thunder Grind King. Yeah, so this board had like a, had Grind Kings. I think it had Bones Wheels and Reds. And it was like a blind board. And um, yeah, he managed to sneak that out the house. And he let me borrow that for like a month. Until um, my mum could buy me another board. That whole month sucked. I mean, I had another skateboard to ride, thankfully. But it wasn't mine. Growing up, World Industries was a massive thing. Like for my year six um, graduation, the formal they have in Australia. Um, I went and bought a World Industries t-shirt like we were supposed to wear a collared shirt But I just bought this brown World Industries shirt if I can find a photo of what I wore I'll chuck it in the video, but yeah, so World Industries was a big deal back then not like it is now I don't even think it's around anymore, but everyone would know of like flame boy and wet willy World Industries was a pretty big thing. They had those characters, but yeah, so this dude just jack my board like i'm still dirty at whoever this dude is till this day I'm still upset about it. That was actually the first time my board got stolen the second time my board got stolen, um, when I was 15, I, I I ran away to Queensland to stay with like my pop and my uncle. Um, yeah, so where I live, I live in New South Wales and Queensland is a state above New South Wales. For anyone watching that doesn't know states of Australia, if you're from overseas or whatever. Yeah, I ran away to Queensland when I was 15. I had a mountain bike I had at the time and I ended up selling it. I actually sold it to the kid that lent me that his older brother's skateboard. So. Um, yeah, I sold my push bike and my parents were a bit sus. They were kind of like, where's your bike? And I was like, oh, it's got a flat tire. I left it at my mate's house. But little did they know, I sold that bike to my friend. I took the money um, and I bought a one-way ticket to Queensland. But yeah, that's a whole nother video. Anyway, I ended up in Queensland when I was like 15. I wasn't going to school. I would have been in about grade 10 at the time. So I spent about three months up there just skating every day. And um, yeah, just pretty much skating every day. That's probably when I started to get really good at skateboarding. But anyway, I was skating the local park there and I had a friend there, another skateboarder. His name was um, Pip. He was like an English kind of kid but had moved to Australia. And um, he had just moved out, which is weird because I would have been 15. He would have been like 16 or 17 maybe. And he just moved out to his this new place he was renting. And he was kind of like, oh, yeah, what are you doing this afternoon? Do you want to come and hang out tonight? Um, I just rented a new place like we can get a DVD a movie and like make food and stuff and I was like Okay, sweet like we can do that. So where the skate park was there was a Woolworths like right across the, there's like a little drain You go over the bridge and then there's like Woolworths for some reason um, We both left our boards at the skate park and it was starting to get dark at that time I don't know why I did that but I, again. I had a funny feeling I was like I shouldn't leave my board here and I just ignored my gut feeling so we went over to Woolies um, we bought some steaks Somehow we were like we were underage, but we ended up buying some beer um, We bought a couple long necks bought some steaks. We bought a movie I can't remember what the movie was. It was something stupid like it's probably like dude. Where's my car? I think Ashton Kutcher Ashton Kutcher whatever his name is. So we ended up getting the stuff. We went back to the park His board was there and uh, yeah, my board was nowhere to be found. So at that time I was Out I wasn't living at home. So I was out. I had no money like I was li literally living like off the small money I could like scab off people and stuff to buy like a KFC kids box to skate every day. Um, yeah, but my board was gone and I was like so devil about it. I didn't know what to do with myself. Literally like I'd wake up every day. My routine was I'd wake up, clean the house um, and then skate to the park, skate all day, then come home. So I didn't know what to do with myself anymore. And I think it was about like a week and Pip, he felt terrible about it. He was like, man, we're going to get your board back. I'm going to get your board back for you. Like it's got to be one of these little kids. <laughs> he ended up telling me a story. Um, he had found some little kid that was at the park that day. 
The kid was on the phone. In Australia, we have these phone boxes, these Telstra phone boxes. Um, he was telling me the story. This kid was like on the phone. He waited for him to get off the phone and then he confronted him in this Telstra um, phone box. And some of them back then, they had doors you could like, um, they folded in so you could like open it and close it. So he pretty much closed this kid into the box and was like, where's Sean's board? Like, we, I know you took it, blah, blah, blah. Like just trying to call his bluff, get him to confess. And he was like, no, no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where it is. It wasn't me. Um, that went on. He was telling me it went on for like five minutes. And then finally the kid broke and he was like, all right, all right. This kid was in tears. He's like, I'll go get the board. I'll go get the board. So the kid left the park, come back with my board. And he had spray painted like the trucks black and like the, the bottom of the board black and stuff. And um, back then I was skating a lot of Powell Mini logos because they were like cheap as chips back then. They were, I think they were like $80 of grip. And they were just a blank board with like a little mini logo logo on the board. So yeah, I got this board back and then, um, yeah, it was just weird because someone had like taken it and painted the trucks and stuff. I think they were thunder trucks to be honest. But yeah, that was the second time my board had got stolen. It sucks, like damn. After that, like, no one's ever stolen my board after that touch wood. <laughs> I just remember how devastating it was back then because I literally had nothing. My life was nothing, just skateboarding. I'd just go and skate every day. Anyway, guys, um, that was just my little rant or story about people stealing my board or my boards getting stolen over the years. Um, if you've had any other experiences with someone's, like, pinched your skateboard or your bike or whatever, or your scooter, let me know in the comment section below. It's a pretty crappy thing to have like your skateboard stolen from you, especially if it's like your one only thing you live for at the time. <laughs> if you like this kind of video, make sure you let me know in the comment section below. Pretty much all I have to say for this video, yeah, don't steal people's skateboards because it sucks. <laughs> anyway guys, um, thanks for watching the video. Appreciate all the support and I'll catch you all in the next one.